Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm just glad you're here. I appreciate each and every one of you more than you know. I want to take a quick second and say thank you, thank you to the channel members. I appreciate each of you so much. It means everything to me. And any of you who come in to find my knife, my ADC content, and stick around to watch, thank you. I appreciate you. If you haven't had a chance yet and you are so inclined, if you do hit the subscribe button and the bell notification, it's a great way to help me out and keep you updated on things that are going on in the channel. So today I have an updated version, my second purchase from Tyler Denny, T. Denny Knives, and this is an apprentice, a T. Denny Apprentice V2 in a different configuration from my last one, and I'll talk about the differences in a sec, but this one is in a satin ground crew wear blade steel, where my other is in an acid etched um, magna cut. And this one, guys, when you order a T. Denny, they ship with a really nice kydex sheath. There's nothing wrong with the kydex sheaths. I, carried my first T. Denny in the Kydex sheath exclusively until I discovered the Oak City leather um, that I had picked up on a couple of chickadees that I purchased on the secondary market. Um, has a couple of different configurations for the uh, apprentice and I wanted to check it out, right? Because I do appreciate what Oak City does. I appreciate what Lancelot does. And the way that Oak City's got it set up, this little pocket dropper sheath, you can just go in and select a knife because I guess they built them to so many. And it's kind of a slick process. You pick the color and the thread. But, and I carry it in my front pocket with the ulti clip on this one or in my back right pocket. One of the others, but it's just a really well made, well done little taco sheath with an ulti clip. You can choose other fasteners, but the real excitement to me comes in this little beautiful, aggressive, handcrafted. Tyler doesn't do this full time. I've been trying to get him to come on the show just to show his craft because I found these on Instagram and I purchased my first one probably about a year ago. And then I started DMing him because there was a specific, I actually, and we'll talk about the scales, but I wanted a satin version. And these things, he makes such small batches, they go really quick. I will link his Instagram and his website in the description below. I have no affiliation with T. Denny Knives. This is just an American-made brand that I found very attractive. And after buying my first one, I waited a while, saved up, and I bought a second one. And I have a feeling that this will not be my last one. I think it's uh, for Javon, for me, it is almost the perfect EDC knife um, in a fixed blade that supplements my carry. So I do have a video that will be coming up in a few days or over the weekend where I update my top five uh, EDC fixed blades. And spoiler alert, the uh, apprentices will make that list. Um, again, I just happen to have this foam here, so I figured I'd slice it up. But just an absolute laser beam of a knife. Super thin, super agile, full tang construction. You can see where it's been um, uh, HRC tested. And uh, I've got the cards for these. These come in, I want to say, let's see if I can remember. He heat treats them very, very well. And he does them all by hand, small batch. Um, yeah, I'd have to pull that out. But anyway, they're also on the website when you look at these guys. So let me get some paper out and show you what I mean by a laser beam. So this would not be a hard use uh, necessarily carry unless you're hard using it at an office. You're hard using it to break down materials to cut through tape, to cut through string. I mean, guys, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's almost, I 
impossible to hear because it's just so flatly ground and done so well. He does offer sharpening, so if you purchase a uh, Apprentice uh, Gen 2, I don't know if they still have Gen 1, so we'll look at that in a second, but you need it sharpened, all you do is send it back to Tyler and he'll sharpen it. However, I don't require that service, and I can't imagine, I, I know it will need to be touched up, sharpened, but I pretty much keep this guy stropped up, and it is a little just absolute bruiser. Um... So let's look at a couple of quick size comparisons with some knives that, um, let's look at it next to the Baby Bug Out. They're kind of smaller that you might guys have in your collection. So it's just about the same length as the Civivi Baby Banter, which is going to make it considerably smaller than our Benchmade Bug Out. Let's get a couple of fixed blades here. Some of my, some of my fave little guys. So let's look at the uh, Bark River. Oh, sorry guys, I'm just wiping some goop off of the blade. Let's look at our Bark River Micro Canadian. And let's look at our ATK Burr or uh, Boker Knives AK1. It's going to be a good bit smaller than that. So that wasn't a good one to compare to. Let's look at our Guardian 3, just because I know that's a smaller slash big knife that might give you some. So a good bit smaller than the Guardian 3, really in an altogether size point. And then finally, we'll look at a couple others. We'll look at my Baltic Blades Angus Neoscale Scalpel. And we'll look at my little 20 CV, Jacob Creates Chickadee. So guys, that gives you a good idea alongside some other small knives that it is a small knife. And what I like about the knife, probably as much as anything, is the thinness of the package because it is such a, um, that's another Oak City leather chickadee sleeve, slip. But it is got this fantastic poon, beautiful swedge. This one, again, is the, the flat ground belt satin. Part of the Gen 2, two changes that were implemented on the G2 besides using some different blade steels is he's now has removable scales, which that is a very cool thing as I'll show you in a second because I hope he will offer some of his carbon fiber scales and some of his other more premium scales kind of as an option. And he also moved the sharpening choil back. And let's look at it next to my V1. This is a V1 in a deep, Oak City leather slip. So the size are the same. This one here is in, let's see. All right, so the bottom one is in crew wear with a belt satin finish. The top one, the Gen 1, is in an acid etch finish, and this one is in Magna Cut. The actual thickness of the knives the grinds, except you'll see where his plunge grind in his second iteration, he moved it back because that was some of the feedback he got, which I think was just a strong move. And guys, I'm excited about these scales because the scales that came with my first one, which really did it for me. I love this knife. It made my top. Again, it's just, this one's Magna Cut and this one's got the Acid Etch Blade. But it's an absolute splinter digger, slicey beast, slurpy saver if I need it to be, just a, a little hypodermic finesse cutter, right? So the thought that he might be able to do some scale runs that might make those available is kind of exciting to me. 
So this is the deep drop Oak City leather. And this is the more shallow drop. Both great sheaths, both same price, just kind of a, a, a choice there. And then I chose the deep carry concealment clip to try on this one and the ulti clip on this one. And you saw on my chickadee, there are other clip options that you can have built into the slips as well. Just really done well, in my opinion. But um, that, guys, is just the basics. And my long-term thoughts is this guy runs anywhere from about 195 to probably 235, depending on the handle material. And again, Tyler is got a real job, a full-time job. I wish he was a full-time knife maker because I would love nothing more than to help him spread the word of these knives, but they're not that easy to come by because he's not making a lot. But guys, I discovered him. He didn't know I had a channel and I was able to buy one off the website when they dropped just because I was following Instagram. And then I saw, like I do with Asher knives and others, I saw that he was working on another batch that he'd be dropping, he said, in about a week. And I just reached out with the DM and I said, Tyler, I've got one of your acid etched. I would love anything you offer in a, a satin grind to kind of mix up my collection. And he said, well, they're Gen 2s. They're a little different. I said, no problem. You know, I said, if you'll just, I'm not looking for a favor. I'm just looking for you to hit me up when you get one ready. And if there's an opportunity, I'd love to jump on and try to get it, you know, just if it's available. And you know, he's a small, small maker. I got a DM about a week later and the handles weren't on this yet. I told him to use whatever handles he wanted. He said, I'm going to have this little satin one in crew wear. I said, sold. Feel free to go ahead and send me a PayPal an invoice, however you want to do it. He set it up where I went to the website, completed the transaction. About a week later, this little finished beauty shipped out to me. So I'm a big fan, i.e. I spend my money on his knives because I like what they are. They're unique, they're well balanced, they're super thin as we'll see as a second, very minimalistic. So 1.2 ounces, if you put it in a kydex sheath with an ulti clip, your carry weight's about 2.3 ounces, and in my Oak City leather slip, that I keep it in my pocket 90% of the time, right about 3.5 ounces. So it carries very well. It is not only a laser beam, not only very minimalistic, but it has a usable, very neutral handle. So nothing to compromise your grip. You can grip it the way you want to grip it. You can rip it the way you want to rip it and it's just a little banger. Let's do a couple of mics on our blade stock so we can see what we're working with here. So you're starting with 0.0935 inch crew wear. Point oh one five five behind the edge, and my little handles are also very felt at over a quarter of an inch. Point two seven two five, and then lastly, we will break out our Javon. No, we're going to break it up. We're not going to break out our Javon promotional tape measure. We're going to break out my fancy, irresponsible purchase of my tie. So I'm going to call that. right over five and a half inches with a blade if we measure from the blade at right about right under two and a half inches a cutting area of two and a quarter inches and what I consider this generous handle what comes right in here at three and a quarter three and a quarter being from right here to right here and guys that is, and there's the little tie, bougie. To be honest with you guys, this was an expensive tape. It's got a replaceable tape. 
I added the keychain thing to it. I can easily remove that. I just thought it was kind of janky, but you know, my little $8 two pack is just as good. That would be maybe a great one if I carried it around in my, uh, in my toolbox, which I don't have a toolbox. So that's kind of null and void. But guys, I hope you found that informative, pointing out again the differences in the Gen 2 if you've had a, a TDNE apprentice before. Sharpening choil has been moved back in the, G2, in the Gen 2, and the scales, whether you go caramel micarta, G10, some of his beautiful shred carbon fiber, and some of his camo carbon fiber. Um, basically, you can now screw them on and screw them off which, you know, makes it a little bit, hopefully down the road, it'll be something where we can upgrade and we can choose scales to go with our knives. But guys, absolutely love him as a maker. I think he's a great person. Hope that one day he gets to where he can really go full on and, uh, and make these little knives kind of, and other knives, you know, because he is a very skilled maker. When you look at these knives, you'll see what I'm talking about. But guys, Thank you so much for watching the content. I appreciate each of you more than you will ever know. You guys keep me alive and really do give me some extra purpose that I really enjoy. Um, if you would, please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. And please choose debate, not hate. I love y'all. Peace.